The CEO of Novo Nordisk set to uh, testify before the Senate's Health, Education, uh, Labor and Pensions Committee uh, tomorrow over concerns about the price of popular obesity drugs Ozempic and Wegovy. Join us now as a ranking member of the committee, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy. You stick a gas gastroenterologist across from me, and I'm not going to talk anything about this other stuff. I, I got so many questions on GERD, but we did that off camera. I, we, I it out <laughs> Senator, uh, thank you uh, for joining us. He gave you some, some uh, good tips for the no alcohol, no coffee, no tomatoes, no pizza. No, can I eat anything at all? I used to tell my medical students um, uh, <laughs> anything you want after a great meal at a fine restaurant in New Orleans uh, will usually make your GERD worse. Uh, and one of them said, well, what about sex? <laughs> I said, well, you know, <laughs> not so much sex. But nonetheless, you think about that coffee, that alcohol, that peppermint, that fatty food, yeah. all makes it worse. I don't know where the hell I'm going to go with that. But let's, <laughs> talk, um, let's talk about uh, these drugs in, in pricing, because we're back to, to uh, Bernie Sanders saying it costs X amount to produce the drug. It's, it's, like when you talk, it's like when someone says that this pill costs $2 to make. It's a pill that took 12 years to develop for billions of dollars. Bernie can't understand why a manufacturer doesn't charge $2. I mean, what do you even say to that logic? That there is a tension between innovation and affordability. And without profit, you do not get innovation. And we're talking about GERD. When I was a medical student, peptic ulcer disease was so common that, that removing a portion of somebody's stomach was one of the more common operations. And then Tagamet came out, we no longer do that operation. Tagamet sold over the counter now. So you need that profit motive. But if the profit is so great that the patient can't afford, then it's like the innovation never took place. Now, Bernie doesn't quite get and doesn't trust that the profit motive is essential for innovation, uh, and that's what you have to balance. What's causing the end? We talked about it. probably GERD goes away, asthma goes away, sleep apnea goes away, diabetes goes away. If you can lose weight, all these things kind of uh, get better. So everybody that needs these and might be obese probably should have them, but they are very expensive. Why? What should we do? They are very expensive, and, and, and there's no single reason why a drug is expensive. There's no single reason. For example, if you have the middlemen, the pharmacy benefit managers, charging sky-high Asking, asking for a sky-high list price so they get a better rebate of which they take a percent. Mm -hmm. That's going to drive up the cost for the people who don't have the insurance or don't have the kind of, the net price ends up being lower to the patient, but the list price is still really high. Now, that's not the entirety of the reason. There is no single reason why drug costs are high. Uh, but again, you've got to balance that profit motive, that incentive to create, with the ability to afford. What, what do you expect to hear from the, the CEO of Novo Nordisk? I, I expect a rope-a-dope, that, that we're not going to learn a whole lot. Uh, um, he's going to say that it's a cost to develop, it's a cost to manufacture, it's a cost to deliver, and, and et cetera. But what we do know is that there's new drugs coming out. There will be competition, and when that competition emerges, the price will begin to come down. So this is a process we go through, um, and sometimes people get impatient with that. You, we, everybody talks about middlemen. No one seems to do anything about middlemen. They, they're as powerful as ever. So we passed legislation out of the Senate that would address the issue of pharmacy benefit managers. They passed it out of the House. The bills are a little different. Now, right now, I'm not sure the House is going to take up that reconciled version. Uh, I wish they would. Uh, I do think we could pass something to address it. And if we don't pass it this Congress, we'll pass it next Congress. Do we want to import the price controls that we see in the rest of the world, because that's another thing we hear from, from Senator Sanders, what, what drugs cost here, what drugs cost there. But, I mean, if there's price caps or, or price controls in Europe, they're not the ones that really develop these drugs in the first place. They don't develop as many drugs anymore because of those price controls. Do we want to import price control? The Trump administration um, uh, proposed taking a market basket of what those prices were and having the United States as a multiple of that. Now that would be for Medicare, but if the average of Germany, France, and England was 100 bucks, maybe we'd pay 150, but we wouldn't pay 500. But we still have to understand that the net price that the patient's getting, if this is the list price, sky high, and then there's a huge rebate going back to the pharmacy benefit manager, the net price ends up being far lower. Uh, I'm not saying it's a good system, but I'm saying typically the patient is paying less 
than that list price that's kind of the sticker shock. We but hit. The yeah. yeah, the pharmacy benefit managers are taking that big rebate and they're taking a percent of that. They actually have an incentive for a higher list price and sometimes there's a cheaper drug, a cheaper insulin for example, they request to have the higher list price because then they get the bigger rebate. And they're owned by the insurance companies at this point. They and they're owned by the insurance company, which is a vertical integration. Right. They so there is a, as, as a, a conflict of interest there, yeah. I think. I think so, too. We've had uh, Dr. Scott Gottlieb on talking about some of the provisions in the, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act for Medicare being able to negotiate. And they hype the numbers of how much they're getting off. Do you know, are you up, up to speed on that? Supposedly the discounted price is nowhere near the ones they're using to say that you know we've cut it by 30%. It was actually much cheaper because of discounts before that. And then it doesn't come into effect in a couple of years or something. Has there been progress with, with Medicare negotiating? So, so there has, I, I would say, reasonably say you could say there's been progress. But I will say if the PBM, if the pharmacy benefit manager, does not put the cheaper drug on the preferred tier, then the patient may not have access to it. Now keep in mind in insulin, Eli Lilly has had a $35 insulin, but the pharmacy benefit managers have not carried that $35 insulin. They have carried the more expensive because they want the bigger rebate. So if Medicare negotiates a lower price and it does not require the pharmacy benefit manager to put it on a preferred tier, which it does not, then it may be the patient still paying for the more expensive drug instead of the one with the lower negotiated price. And how, the, the, the shifting gears entirely, your fix or the proposed fix for Social Security, is this something that, that uh, the former President Trump would, would get, they, no one wants to talk about uh, reforming Social Security because it sounds like you're cutting Social Security. So Joe, let me just give a little context. Social Security is going insolvent, the trust fund, in about eight years. Okay. At which point under current law, there'll be a 20 to 24% cut in benefits. Uh, now, I and other senators have come up with the idea of having an investment fund it, separate from Social Security. You put 1.5 trillion in over five years and put it in the broader economy. We know that the uh, return in the broader economy is much greater than in treasuries, and treasuries is, only, is the only thing Social Security, can, the trust fund, can invest in. Right. I think Trump would be open to it. I think Harris would be open to it. They've talked about sovereign wealth funds. Now, I am not for a sovereign wealth fund that's kind of the executive branch's plaything. I want to put it in this or put it in that. But if you create an investment fund, if you will, the senior citizens 401k, except all risk is borne by the fund and none of it by the beneficiary, yep. then we can actually increase benefits for the beneficiary as we bail it out. Maybe put it all in Bitcoin. Uh, well, I don't know about that either, man, but uh, it wouldn't be my decision. It wouldn't be Congress's decision, put it that way. It would be, it'd be people who know this what they're doing. This has been uh, an idea that's been around for a while. And there's, if you go long term, look at the, the return of a 10-year treasury or, or a treasury versus the stock market, it's, it's a multiple better for, unless unless we really hit a bad stretch it would be obviously it would work to, to be or in unless the, in you the started it at a market high at, at a yeah it's still even when you do that if yep. you go back in time it's still we, we've still looked at this and since and, and since 1929 the stock market has averaged just the stock market an 8.54 percent return yeah now if you estimate that we have about a 3.5 or 4.0 uh, cost of borrowing then you're getting a premium there of investing in our fund, you put all the proceeds back in for the first 60 years, 75 years maybe, right. and you allow the return to accumulate, and then you hit the rule of 12, I think it is, and it just blossoms. Okay. And this is how we can save Social Security without raising taxes on the seniors. So does your GERD get worse when you have these meetings and, and conferences with, with the, the other with other members of, of the Senate? Is My girl gets worse when I drink a lot of coffee. But then sex immediately takes care of it? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I take, um, I take, um, I have a big pile of antacids in my, in my office okay, and I just pop antacids. You pop the antacids. But by the way, Joe, you've lost weight and that's a great thing to help. I'm going to keep losing and I, I swear I haven't done any we go uh, I think you should. Thing. I know you do. Microdose. You're ready. And look, ready look at him. Go. He's ready to, to take. I want to take See, that would be abuse. That would be drug abuse. It if, would not. I think that ultimately we're all going to be taking this stuff. 
So there was a famous physician that said the chief difference between a man and a dog is that a man likes to take a pill and a dog doesn't. So Andrew, if you're talking about taking a pill for your losing weight, you're, you're just like too much into medicine, man. <laughs> wow, from, from the doctor. doctor. Yeah, from the doctor. The, you don't listen to me. You don't listen to the doctor. Senator, Senator thank Doctor, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Senator yeah. Doctor, right. That was really helpful, thank you.